G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. Well, Bitcoin did what I thought it would do, and I did say I thought it would do. It just did it about a week after I thought it would happen. So it was sort of back around here. I was saying that I suspected Bitcoin was going to pull back uh, and drop down to about the 11,000 sort of 200, 11,300 dollar range. And guess what? It's done it. Again, it just took a little week. <laughs> It just took a little week. It just took a little while, sorry. Uh, but yeah, it did get there. So, you know, I'm only a week too early. But what we can see here is it actually did. I, I remember looking at it earlier and it was right down to 11,200. And I was just like, wow, I was, you know, surprised. And I thought it was going to go lower, but we can see it only wicked down there for a very brief, short amount of time. And then we've fallen straight back up into this range. So generally, I don't pay too much attention to wicks, except for when I see a candle like this. So this candle right here in the middle, where we can see uh, there's two wicks of equal length and a, you know, the body of the candle. Uh, it looks like a spinning top, basically. That is a market of indecision. It doesn't know what it's going to do. But as you can see here, it can break out to the upside. But as you can see uh, on other occasions, uh, it'll break out to the downside. I can't find any right here, but uh, something sort of similar to that and a break out to the downside. So what we're waiting to do is see what this does. Is this, is this going to break up or is this going to break down? Well, we've got to go down here and we've got to have a look at the volume. So currently the volume is low. So it is possible that it's going to break to the low side. Now, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But at the moment, with the way the market's going, uh, a good clean rejection of that $2,500 level, and we only just wicked up there, and we've barely been able to sort of hold that $3,800, $3,900 range. I am suspecting that, again, we're probably going to come down and touch this uh, $10,500 range at some stage. Now, it could be wrong. It could be this 50-day moving average that is going to be the catalyst to push it upwards if we are, in fact, in a true bull market, which is what I believe we are. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. We still have had trouble breaking key resistance levels. And if we zoom out and sort of look at the bigger picture. So, again, we're really struggling to break that $12,500 level. And we've been here before briefly in 2019. Pushed above it, sold off. Pushed a little bit of it, sold off. Just tapped at that time, and then we sold off, and we had a steady decline ever since then. So that is the key level, $12,500. It's going to take some momentum for us to be able to push past that. And then once we push past that, there is some sort of resistance around that $14,000 level. But once we break that really 12500 because there's only minimal here, it's almost clear skies right up to that $19,500 level. Again, a tiny bit at the kind of $17,300 level, but not a whole lot. So there we go. That's where we're at at the moment. We're still trying to break out of this channel. Again, 11900 ish you know, thereabouts to 11000 kind of 200 300-ish. And I suspect it's going to be something similar to this. And again, quite possibly, we're going to come down here and touch this. Whether it's just a real long wick like this that we do again, uh, we'll have to wait and see. And again, I could be completely wrong. But I did suspect that we were going to come back down and test this kind of level down around about here, $11,200, $11,300 level. And that's what we've done. I guess we'll have to wait and see whether I'm going to be right and we bounce off the 50-day moving average or come down uh, and find some support on this ten and a half thousand dollar level. And again, whether it's just a, you know a big steep wick uh, and we bounce up, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But let's go over and have a quick look at the markets. Again, we can see the uh, total market cap is down. So now we're back in a three hundred and sixty billion dollar mark. And again, this is cryptocurrencies. This is what it does. But what you need to do is just look at the bigger picture, not the you know day to day stuff. You know, if you're a trader. Uh, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff is fine. You obviously want to know about that. But if you're just sort of an investor, then you've got to look at the big picture stuff. So we can quickly go back to here. And again, this is on the daily candles. So it's really hard to get a read kind of on what's happening with daily candles when they're all over the place. What we can do, so let's just zoom, again, zoom out again. I showed this before. Let's look at weeklies. A few less candles and gives us a better sort of picture of what's happening overall. Still similar, but not as jagged. And we can see from here, so this is way back in December 2018, we have been in an upward trend. 
So we bottomed out down here and we pushed up. Again, we really struggled to get th through this $12,500 level. Sold off. We used the $10,500 level as support for a while. Then it was resistance once, resistance twice, resistance a third time, and then we broke through it. So again, on the bigger picture, I am suspecting that we might come back here and again, use that $10,500 level of support. But it could be wrong, we could push through. But that's the weekly. Now, if we want an even better kind of picture of what's happening in the overall terms of things, not the short uh, time frames, because that's really hard to read. And let's have a look what's happening on the monthly. So again, the monthlies, it just keeps going up. We've been up, small correction, bounced off that support resistance, a fairly big correction, and then we've just been pushing up ever since. But the general trend, again, you can follow this, the general trend is we're still going upwards and we've broken out of these uh, support lines. Well, not support lines, but you know the ascending wedge that Bitcoin has been forming for a while now. So that's what I prefer to look at if I'm trying to get an understanding of where the markets are. But I still use the dailies just to see uh, smaller trends that are happening, but the bigger trends I definitely zoom out. All right, something I wanted to have a look at. So DeFi is now over 7 billion. This just, you know, every probably 10 days or so, this goes up another billion. It is unbelievable. And I think DeFi is where the big gains will be made when this really starts to kick off. And things like, you know, Aave uh, are really helping push forwards. But it's mainly six projects that hold 90% of all the capital uh, in DeFi. And look, there's a ton of little DeFi projects that are coming out and everyone wants to jump on them and, you know, go for these insane pumps. And look, congratulations to you if that works and you do really well. I just don't trust. Uh, you know, any project that doesn't have some kind of backing behind it uh, and hasn't been around for a while, I'm just somewhat skeptical of it because every man and his dog's going to come out and try and make a DeFi project once they know we're in a bull run uh, and they can just throw something, you know, thing together and people invest, you know, millions of dollars into it. But we go down and have a look at the big ones. So what are the big ones? Uh, where are we? Make a Dow. They're one of the big ones. Curve Finance, one of the big ones. Yearn Finance, one of the big ones. Synthetics Network. Now, I love Synthetics Network. I've been with them, uh, invested in them for a while, and I like the returns. But unfortunately, the Ethereum fees at the moment are just killing it. I went to uh, mint some coins and claim my rewards on Synthetics. I think it was just yesterday. And uh, to claim my rewards, the fee was worth more than the reward. So it just wasn't worth it. Uh, and that's really disappointing. They seriously need some scaling solutions if they want the smaller average Joes to be able to use their platform and invest uh, you know, money into it. Because we can't stake with them at the moment unless you're basically staking you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth. Then no worries, you can afford the Ethereum fees. You know, a $30 Ethereum fee you know, to get thousands of dollars is no worries. But if you're like me and you're not staking anywhere near that, a $30, a $30 Ethereum gas fee is more than what I'm trying to uh, sort of claim back, so it just doesn't work. Uh, and Compound as well. Uh, and you know, again, there's billions of dollars here, so 797 million, nearly a billion, 801 billion, I think that's actually 801 million dollars there. Uh, they've got it mixed up, but yeah, plenty of money being poured into DeFi, uh, and I'm a fan of DeFi. I'm just, again, very skeptical of a lot of the new projects that are coming out. But that's not to say they'll all be scams. I just, yeah, I need to see some uh, history with something generally before I'm going to get in. Or at least, you know, read some really good stuff, you know, once I've done some uh, work, you know, going through GitHub and, you know, things like that, Telegram, uh, amongst other different places. Discord is another one. You know, find if there's a community that's been around for a while and this isn't something that just popped up yesterday and it's got, you know, completely anonymous uh, you know, people behind it, then then I'm definitely 100% skeptical. Go over here. So Ripple's facing a lawsuit over Pay ID. Pay ID uh, is a name that's already been used in Australia, and I think since about 2016. So yeah, I think R Ripple are going to struggle with that one. They might have to consider a name change or pay a whole lot of money to Pay ID out. I'm sure uh, not Pay 
not pay pay ID out, but basically buy uh, those naming rights because pay ID yeah has been around in Australia for a while. So yeah, interesting. We'll wait and see. It's not like Ripple couldn't afford to uh, pay for it if they didn't want to. They got plenty of money. But here, Crypto Wales uh, triggers fifty uh, million dollar Bitcoin transfer. Uh, so again. Bitcoin, uh, by the sounds of it, has been sent to a Binance wallet uh, and possibly traded. And so that's got a lot of people worried. And that's what also makes me think uh, this is going to come down. So someone has seen that Bitcoin's possibly trading sideways. There's not a lot of momentum in it. And so there's more momentum in the altcoins at the moment. So, you know, they've possibly cashed out their Bitcoin uh, to get into altcoins, which will further push the price of Bitcoin down, uh, you know not a long way down it's not like you know 50 million dollars worth of bitcoin is going to affect the market you know in any major way but it, you know it may definitely pay a part in this coming right down to the eleven thousand dollar mark even maybe that ten thousand five hundred dollar mark that we uh spoke about earlier so we come over here bitcoin is in limbo until thursday's inflation uh speech by the fed uh chair so basically on thursday uh the fed are going to decide whether they're going to pump further stimulus uh, out and whether they're going to uh, raise inflation as opposed to uh, bring it down. So really that's going to play a factor and maybe on Thursday we're going to see the market do something. Maybe on Thursday it goes down a lot harder if things aren't favourable and maybe on Thursday you know we get that big spike and pushes up you know through that twelve and a half thousand dollar level if they decide to you know uh, feed a lot more stimulus and not you know uh, increase inflation. Interesting. And last but not least uh, record high Bitcoin whale population. So that's bullish for uh, Bitcoin price. So again, there's a lot more Bitcoin whales showing up these days. There's a lot of people uh, getting into the market. And again, it even says here, you know, they're holding over 1,000 Bitcoin. God, I'd love to have just 100 Bitcoin. <laughs> 10 Bitcoin. Let's go with 10 Bitcoin. That's a good start, let alone 100 or 1,000 or even, you know, a million or so. But that again leads towards the claim that you know things are looking bullish, bullish in the grand overall scheme. And again, go to your charts, zoom out a little bit. Don't focus on the you know the 15 minutes or the 30 minutes or the four hours, unless you're a trader. If you're a trader, that's what you should do. They're the things you focus on. If you're more just trying to get a, a rough read of the market, you know you can use the dailies. But if you really want to see the overall trend. And the trend is your friend. I've said it before and I'll continue to say it. The trend is your friend. Follow the trend. If the trend is it's going up, it's probably a bull market. If the trend is it's going down, then it's probably uh, a bear market. You've got to be able to follow that stuff and read it. But anyway, that's it from me. I'm not going to take up too much more time. Again, I am expecting this to you know, trade sideways for a while. I suspect it might be something similar to this. And I wouldn't be surprised if we bounce off the 10,500 yeah, all that sort of, you know, the 50-day moving average. I'd be surprised if we went lower, but, you know, I've been surprised by Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies many times before. Uh, you know, I'm no savant. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. I can only give you my personal opinion, and that's all it is based on the, you know, three-plus years that I've been in the crypto space. Well, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Geez, it would be good if you're on the game train. I wasn't. I lost a little bit today, but that's the way it plays out. And I'll see you next time.